guys, welcome to the channel. This is Yvonne from Ginger Chick Rehab. Thank you for popping on and checking out what I am up to. So in today's video, I'm taking some of the secondhand finds that I have found at estate sales. And we actually had gotten a outdoor booth, which is really late in the season. So the last few auctions we went to kind of had geared us towards looking for some different items. So I'm sharing the process with you all of how I get some outdoor items along with some other secondhand finds made over and getting them ready to resell. So sometimes when you're looking for items, you're looking for the items. So you have to look past the color or the rustiness or the crustiness. You have to be able to envision what it can be in egg baskets so far have been selling really well for us since our last auction. I think we've almost sold all of them. So I was happy to come across a few more at this auction house. So, but I'm not a fan of the yellow in the orange color. I noticed that the black and the red sold automatically. So let's tape these handles up and get them repainted. Here they are, all freshly repainted. Taking the time to tape off that handle was well worth it. It definitely made them look like they are not going to be falling apart anymore. And then it gave them a new look. There was just something about these when we did an online auction that I was like, oh, I just really want to make them over. Galvanized, heavy duty. I love the writing. I don't like that they spray painted on them, but I can see so many uses. Not only just a trash can, but you could put your Christmas tree in there. You could put branches in there. There's just so many opportunities, but they were a little bit on the filthy side. So let's get these cleaned up. And luckily still in November, Michigan has had wonderful weather up until the point when I was doing this video for you, filming the video anyway, that I was able to still power wash. I actually put on my strongest nozzle hoping to be able to remove some of that spray paint. Well, I didn't really achieve it. I got them clean, but I really couldn't take that black spray paint off. I don't want to cover up the age. I, there's just something about the aging and the patina that galvanized buckets like this get. So I just took the time to take some masking tape, try to stay in a straight line around a round object as much as I can could <laughs> and then tape off the rest of the area and I know I could have used contact paper somebody said newspaper but sometimes the tape is just the easiest thing to use sometimes paper and contact paper doesn't don't always cooperate with you the way you'd want them to <laughs> Now that I have them all sprayed up, I'm actually just going to do some stamping on them. I just have some of my IOD stamps. I'm trying to pick out what I want. And then sometimes it's just a pain. I will tell you, there are certain letters I would buy double of if I could. And I'm probably sure that you could because trying to match up where you previously stamped. But I'll link what I use down below. And now I'm just doing some like this has been on the farm. This is a advertisement piece for somebody's farm and so what I did here is I just lay out my letters I put them on the IOD stamping pad that has the the grid pattern on it that way I can make sure that everything is nice and straight and then I grab them with packing tape and make little handles off to the side. So I just find that this works so much better trying to get around a round object, being able to hold just a little bit of the tape onto the object and then very ever so gingerly pressing down on my letters to see if I got 
the transfer to take place. And now, uh, yep, I got a little bit of my R did not take. I didn't apparently did not press that. So I'm going to go in with a little hope and a prayer that I'm just going to be able to touch just that wee bit corner. Now this way I can do layers upon layers doing my lines. And so I need to make sure that my previous is dry. If it if the tape pulled off a little bit, this is a rusty crusty. This is a salvaged piece. I don't care. <laughs> I don't mind that some of that. I'm going to end up sealing this all in anyway, so I'm no worries here. But I need, I'm need. i using the IOD ink in the white version to stamp on the black. So I want to make sure that it's nice and dry just in case I accidentally touch it. I don't want to smear my letters. When I'm coming up with wording and naming and dates, they really don't mean anything. It's just what my mind thinks of at the time. I'll always get that comment. Somebody will say, hey, what does that mean? What is that? What are the letters and the numbers and the wording? Nope. It's just, I don't know. It's just what my mind thinks of at the time when I'm doing this. So yes. So I ended up cutting down the piece of packing tape and half to grab the littler letters and it just is so much easier to be able to get a little bit of that tape on there press down my letters and voila So now it's a one and done. Yep, that little E just was not going to be straight for me on this one. I did the, the two exactly the same. I'm really trying to stock our front porch. Our first week being there, it did really well. So that's nice. But now I need to get some more items to put on there. And this is a, a day process that I'm doing all these items for you all. Anyway, I'm sealing this in using the Weather Defense, which is a wonderful metal spray for outdoors in case somebody wants to use this on the outdoors because it'll actually be sitting in our outdoor booth. And I'm glad that I only sprayed that middle because look at it, it has all these random numbers which I don't know if they're dates or they're batch numbers. I don't know what came in these but I absolutely love that stamping on there. Mm -hmm. And yep, now it's this big caddy. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how many of these caddies I have been running across lately. And most of the smaller ones have sold, but the bigger ones, I'm sorry, I just cannot just give them away, especially the work that I put into them. Now this one is beautiful. I love that sizing. It's got some wonkiness with, it's been used and abused. Somebody, it was a tool caddy and it was made to, be you. So let me see if I can fix this up to make it into beautiful decor. So I need to figure out if I can take some of that wood off. I'm not going to be able to add wood to the other side, but I would like to go ahead and see if I can saw some of this other wood to make it look a little bit more matching. So I'm just going to go ahead and use my Japanese saw to see if I can achieve this. And it's kind of, it's plywood. So it's that, you know, where they press the plywood together. So it's going to come off in layers. And did I tell you all, I'm taking advantage of one of the last days that we had that was beautiful in Michigan. It was a God wink moment. I'm like, I need more stock for our outdoor booth and so here he is giving me a beautiful day to work on all these projects.
And I don't know about you all, but I am terrible about ordering paint online. And I know my favorite color, the Red Barn. Oh, yeah. I don't have enough to do the projects that I want. So I'm going to try to match it with some of the Waverly and add some antiquing wax. I know it's not going to be a complete match. That is the only... I absolutely love Dixie Belle's color, but I am terrible about ordering paint and using paint up. So I'll probably end up going to Home Depot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Melissa. And ordering, it, you know, getting it to color match. I just, I can't take the time. I don't use a lot of reds, but it seems like it's in the season. And so I'm trying to pop. So I'm just going to try to mix the two together because I had previously done a other caddy where I had used the barn red and then put the antiquing wax over the top of it. So I thought, well, maybe, maybe this will give me the same look, but it's still that Waverly and Crimson still has a little bit more of a pinkish hue that I'm re not really a fan of, but I'm gonna go ahead and just get this on and then I'm gonna deal with it as after I get it all painted. Really don't want to wait for this to dry down. I want to go ahead and add another coat of antiquing wax over it. I want it to be more brown than that in your face, kind of a pink tone. And I think this will achieve it. So while it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and apply that right over it and give it that aged brown look. can say I definitely love the barn red a little bit more than the crimson but it still did the job like I said I'm trying to stock that outdoor booth so it doesn't look empty but there's still not very much snow on the ground so got it all sanded and distressed yes I did the inside also just freshening the whole thing up and now I'm going to go ahead and seal that in with some polycrylic Now, two of these benches, when I purchased them at the auction house, I knew I wanted them for the outdoor booth. We're looking for a table that might be a permanent to add height and be able to layer upon, but we definitely needed some type of a bigger brunch to do the same and then have a price tag on it that somebody will want to buy it. I love my bench on my front porch. That adds height, some place to sit, some place to put a little bit of decor. So I really want to make these over. If you're wondering, yes, I started as soon as the sun rose that day when I realized it was going to be sunny and warm. I'm like, oh, I've got some power washing I'd like to do. I'd rather power wash these than try to wash them by hand and then let the sun help dry them. You know, when it comes to an outdoor booth, a lot of people would have just put it in as is, but it's just, it's just me. Don't, it's just me. That's all I have to say. So I'm going to be using that same red mixture on this. I'm just going to be freshening it up. So the nice thing about doing benches for an outdoor area is they don't have to be perfect. You don't feel like you have to make them pristine. You didn't. I didn't really pre-sand anything. The power washer got all the anything that was going to be flying off off. But now I'm going back in, and yep, I know I'm distressing the piece, making it look like it was used in, <laughs> used and abused. I just I, I just wanted a little bit cleaner of a look, and nope, it's not completely perfect. But that's the fun of having an outdoor birth booth. I don't have to make it look perfect.
So what did you think? Yes, outdoor items. I know it's late in the season, but people are still decorating their front porches, some other outdoor area for the Christmas season. And some people have items that they like to bring indoors. So not only is it just for outdoors, but it's also for indoors. And I just absolutely love salvaged vines. And I love sharing the process with you all of how I make them over and spruce them up, not taking away their character, just giving them a new life. So let me know down in the comments below which one of the items I made over today was your favorite. And as always, thank you for being a part of our YouTube family. And if you're new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please hit the subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we've uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye!